Hey there Dev Squad, Vertus here and welcome back to my C++ Fundamentals course. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create and use functions inside of C++. We're going to be going over exactly why they're useful when you're writing efficient and effective code. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now we're inside of Visual Studio, we are going to take a look at exactly what a function is and its use inside of C++ code. So for those of you that aren't familiar with functions, a function is just a block of code and that block of code is going to have a task and sometimes that task is going to use some information which is usually going to be referred to as an input or an output. So, for example, if you have an action you want to do multiple times, you don't want to have to write it out all those lines over and over again. Instead, what you could do is just put that code inside of a function and simply reference the function. And there's lots of benefits of doing this. First and foremost, you are going to save yourself time because you're not going to be writing out hundreds of lines of code over and over again. You just type it once and you can call that as many times as you want. And last but not least, your function is going to be a lot cleaner and a lot easier to go through. And if you have functions with names that are going to be quite memorable and self-explanatory, other people looking at your code are going to be able to reference that and know exactly what it is. Also, like I said before, functions sometimes have information and that is going to be processed as part of that function and that is going to be through the input and the output. And generally, with a function, you are going to have to return a variable. So let's go ahead and dive straight into creating a function. So creating a function is going to be done outside of your main function and doing so is really straightforward. The one thing you want to think about when you're very first creating this is the return type. The return type is the type of value you're going to be giving back to your code. Now for the purpose of this video, what we're going to be doing is creating a function that takes two integers and multiplies them together. And the end result of that is going to be an integer. So having said that, the return type for this is going to be a function. So what we're going to do then is for a function, we're going to do the variable type, which in this case is going to be integer. And then with this, we're going to give this a name and we're going to give this a name quick maths. Once we've done that, what we're going to be doing is using the brackets. The brackets always need to be there for a function, even if you don't have any input information. So inside of these brackets here, this is where you're going to be putting your inputs. We are going to be taking two integers, integer A and integer B. The name doesn't matter too much, but what we're going to be doing is putting in int A and then we're going to use a comma to separate this. And then we're also going to have our int B just like that. And that is our function setup, or rather the header for it anyway. And that is us knowing we've now got a function. Now what we need to do is actually put the code inside of this, which is going to be run whenever this function is called. So what we're going to do on the next line, we are going to add the curly brackets just like this. And anything inside of this is going to be called when you reference this function. Now, what I'm also going to do just before our quick maths function here, we are going to add a comment by using the two slashes here. And we're just going to give a description of what this function is doing. And the reason why I'm doing this now as part of this video is simply to get you in the good practice of commenting your code. So if you were to look at that function later on, you're going to know exactly what it is. So what we're going to do is simply type in takes two numbers and multiplies it. And then what we now need to do is simply just write that in code form inside of our function. So what we're going to do then is take integer A, integer B, and then we're going to print it onto the screen. And we're also going to return the end result of that. So what we're going to do is STD and then C out. And then into this, we're going to feed in the result of A, which is integer A, multiplied by B. And then what we're also going to do on the next line is use the end line function that we've got here. And then we're going to end this off with a semicolon just like this. So essentially, whenever we call our code here now for quick maths, it is going to print onto the screen 
A multiplied by B. So that is the input, whatever we set that to later on, multiplied by B, and it's going to print it onto the screen. What we also need to do as part of this function is return that end result. So what we're going to do is return A multiplied by B, and then once again, because this is a statement, we are going to be ending that off with a semicolon. Now, as for the type of information it's going to return, A multiplied by B, that is going to be preset over here that we set up earlier. It is going to return that as an integer. So that is pretty much everything that you need to know about creating a function. It is as simple as that. What we're now going to do is show you how you can reference that function. So what we're going to do is in our code here, just before our std.get, which is going to wait out, we are going to call this function. And all you've got to do for that is simply type in quick maths just like we spelt it over here. And as you can see, we have got our quick maths. And luckily for us, because we got that comment just above it, it is going to say takes two numbers and multiplies it when we hover over it. So we can very easily see exactly what we're referencing. And then with this, what we're going to do is add the brackets. And this is where we put our information in. It is expecting two integers. So what I'm going to do is put in two, separate it with a comma, and then we are going to put five in there. And just like that, what it's going to do is multiply 2 by 5, which is 10, and it's going to print it onto the screen. So it's basically just taking this code here and running it. And if we wanted to, we could copy that as many times as we wanted. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the rest of my code in my main function here, just like that. And I'm going to run it through the debugger. And what you're going to see is it's going to multiply 2 by 5. And as you can see, we have now got 10. And what we can do, we can take this function and we can paste it as many times as we want. And we can just change the numbers. So let's go with five by three. And we're also going to go with two by four. So our results on this should be 10, 15, and then eight. And then if we run it for the debugger, you can see that 10, 15, and 8. As many times as we want, it's going to take that information and give us whatever it says here. So referencing a function could not be easier. And if you use comments like I did there, whenever you're calling it, you are going to be able to hover over and quickly see exactly what that function is going to do. Now, what I'm going to do now is actually show you how you can use the return information from that function. So let's say we wanted to change the variable of our variable test up here from 69. What we could do is take the quick maths here and then we could actually feed that into that variable. So we could set variable test to the value that quick maths is going to return. So let's go ahead and do just that. Just in the same way as we'd modify a variable earlier on, what we would do is simply set the variable name. So that is variable test. And we're going to set this equals to quick maths. And the values we are going to use for this is five and three. And then we're going to end off that statement with a semicolon. So essentially, what our code here is going to do is it's going to set the value for variable test equal to the return of this function that we've got here. And because it's running this function, it's also going to run any code within this. So it's also going to print the return of that onto the screen. So if we run this through the local Windows debugger, as you can see here, it is 15. And if we was to go through and do std cout and then feed in the value of our variable test, you are going to see it's going to take that new variable information and put it onto the screen. So variable test, and we are good there. So we've got a variable test in there. What we're also going to do is STD, and then we are going to end off that line with a statement. So what we should have is 15 and then 15. So let's take a look at this. So it's going to do the function. And then all we're doing is reading the new value of that variable on there. So as you can see, we can use our function to very quickly process information inside of our code. So 
Now we've created a function, we've referenced it, and also used it to process information, there is one other thing that I wanted to show you, and that is a void function. So, for example, if you didn't actually want to return any information, or you didn't need to, what you can do is get away with not actually returning any information, because there's no point returning it if you don't need it. It's just going to take up extra resources. So what we're going to do is create a void function. So all we're going to be doing here is simply creating a function which is going to take a number that we give it and print it onto the screen. It's not going to return anything at all. So having said that, what we're going to do is do just that. Because you don't want it to return any type of information, we are going to use the return type void. That means nothing. Once we've done that, we're going to be giving this function a name, which is going to be print screen. And then with that done, we're going to open up these brackets here just like that. And then with that done, we're going to put some information into here, which is going to be integer x. And then on the very next line here, we are going to add our curly brackets, which is going to open up the function telling the code compiler exactly what to do. So what we're going to do here is simply std cout, which is going to print onto the screen. And then we are going to feed into that the value of x. And then we're going to end off that line just like that by doing std end line and semicolon. And like I said, you do not need to return anything here. So we are all good to go there. What we're going to do now is go into our main function and we're actually going to call this. So we're going to do print screen brackets and we're going to tell it to put 69 onto the screen just like that. And because this is a statement, we are going to be putting a semicolon onto the end of this. And as you can see here, instead of writing all of this code, all we need to do is just write this the once. Run this through the local debugger, just like that. And as you can see here, it is going to write that function. We're not returning anything and we're not using any additional resources. Anyway, that is absolutely everything that I wanted to show you in terms of creating and referencing function. Before I do go, there is one last thing that I wanted to do, which is to simply say with our main function, by default, you do not need to return anything it is just automatically going to return zero. So don't worry about adding in here, return zero. Just leave it just the way it is. And also be sure to get into the good habit of commenting your code. So again here, we are gonna make a comment so we know exactly what it is. Take a value and print it onto this screen just like that. That is everything for this video. Once again, I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.